All right, so there she is all assembled. And what I've done is I have added some, well, to clean up all the cables and everything, I added some yellow uh, braided um, cable protection tubing, whatever it's called. So these are actually the connections to the spindle, which go in and out of these uh, motor mounts here. And it doesn't, it doesn't, oops, sorry about that. It doesn't get in the way of, of the actual uh, motor turning. Um, same thing to this motor, I, I braided it. And um, I'm routing that through, uh, through the channel here. Uh, same thing for that motor. And then on the excess, I'm just kind of keeping it clumped up right there. Um, I was missing, it didn't come with any extra screws to mount the uh, driver board. So I'm going to uh, see if I can 3D print a case for that and uh, mount it properly. Um, and then the wires for the this motor and the spindle themselves, this is also has that yellow tubing but I enclosed, uh, it's hard to open, but I enclosed the yellow tubing for this motor inside more tubing, which is this black sort of plastic stuff that I had lying around. I don't know why, but I had that. And it's cut right in the middle all around, so then you can just stick wires in it. So that's what I did to that. Um, and there's just enough slack here that when this moves all the way over here it doesn't pull on anything there's no strain there so so that's good um right now this is just literally just hanging there by the you know this stuff is holding it up so i definitely have to find a solution for that now some paneling would be nice um i'm not sure how that would work because i would like to protect the screw because I've always wondered how these machines, I see people milling and doing all kinds of things. And there's all this junk in here. So I'm like, that's got to mess things up eventually. So um, if I guess if you have some sort of cover here with uh, some rubber flaps that are, you know, cut in the middle. So as the machine goes through, it kind of just opens the rubber like that. You know what I mean? As it's moving through. But then the rest will be closed if that makes any kind of sense um but as far as um i mean for right now it's uh it's good oh another thing is that the height of this it's so high that to reach down uh you have to you see the the it's already almost at its lowest point so i've been having to stack things up to get you know the um, z-axis a little higher but it came with this and this is it's called an ER11 and um, it has this in it so you just stick this in here screw this thing on and then this goes right up here and then it gives you um, well that much height right because this is look how high this is I mean look how low it is already not including the bit so then I can definitely move my uh, z-axis a lot higher now so that's good because now I won't have to uh, lower the whole thing and uh, oh yep that was it just wanted to show off the uh, nice looking machine and uh, for the price I think it's uh, well worth it if, if you take your time to clean it up and and really build it properly and align it and um, I had to um, to support the auto leveling function that's in the previous video I did have to uh, upgrade the firmware on this driver I was thinking about upgrading the whole driver to a tiny G board but it's really unnecessary now because um, I wanted the auto leveling features but if you upgrade the, the Gerbil on this from 0 0.9 which is what it comes with if you upgrade it to 1.1 1 .1, um, it's it will support auto leveling on pin a5 which is uh, one of these exposed pins right here and then you can use an Arduino I used an AVR dragon to actually flash the new firmware on it um, so so yeah uh, that's about it all that's really left is just to cover up that and uh yeah there it is
is. 